Welcome to Arrested Hand Free with the sheriff's daughter, your host, Julianne Harris. Arrested Hand Free delivers an edgy but uplifting message about faith and God's grace. And now here is your host, the sheriff's daughter, Julianne Harris. Hey, I want to welcome you to the Arrested and Free show with the sheriff's daughter. My name's Julianne Harris, and I'm so glad that you tuned in this morning. I know it's kind of early, or maybe you're listening to it later in the day, praise God. Either way, you're listening to it, and so I just want to share with you some things that have changed my life over the last few years. It's only been a few years that I've been walking in truth, and so I'm just going to share those things with you. So if you've listened the last couple of weeks, I've been sharing my testimony. And I do want to say, if you haven't listened, then you can always go back and listen. How can you do that? Well, you can either go to Facebook, and you can find the link there under Arrested and Free. Otherwise, you can go to krdo.com, click on radio, and go to podcast, and scroll through there and find my podcast audio podcast and you can listen to my previous episodes there. So I'm going to kind of pick up where I left off last week. I pray that you've had a wonderful week since the last time you listened. And I was talking about my testimony and I think I had dropped off where I had returned back home to eastern Montana, very broken, very hurt. And I started attending my brother's Bible study and he was saying some things I have never heard before in my entire life. Never in church, never on Christian radio, (laughs) never on anything, and that is spirit, soul, and body, meaning you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. This was revolutionary to me because he was saying how, oh, yeah, God is not upset with you. If you've believed on Jesus, he is pleased with you, and I I was like, no way, that there is no way that's even possible, but something inside of me was like, man, but what if it is? Like, how awesome would that be? So I would go to his Bible studies on Wednesday nights, and and I would continue to live the life that I knew how to live, which was the bar. The bar was my home. Like, that's how I related to people. I was more comfortable in a bar than anywhere. I could walk into any bar anywhere and feel instantly at home. And I know there's a lot of you out there because we would do it together. So (laughs) I was still going to the bar, but I was hearing all these awesome truths. And I remember one night, now I'm going to get into some supernatural experiences here. So just, you know, hold on to your steering wheel, hold on to your computer, whatever you got to do, sit down and listen. So I, one night it was after a Bible study and I was hearing this unconditional love of God. I was hearing how God is pleased with you. He's not ashamed of you and, and how God is just a good God. And when you believe on Jesus, God sees you as perfect as Jesus. And I I was like, my mind was overwhelmed. I was thinking, no way, no way can this be true. And so I go home, I go to, I just went straight to bed because I was like, this is unbelievable. I don't even know what to do. All I wanted to do was cry and like cry hard, you know, like after you've watched Braveheart or something like that sob or like Godfather three, you know, like to where you can hardly even breathe because you're crying so hard. Anyways, I went home and went to bed, and ah, that's how I cried. And I was crying out to God, and I was saying, God, I am so, so sorry. What was I sorry for? I was sorry for all the situations I had been in, for all the different things that I had done, and all while claiming to be a Christian. You know, a lot of times I think it's easier for us to think, okay, God forgives me. Because after all, he's God. He's supernatural. He can forgive me. But I think it's harder sometimes to forgive ourselves for the things that we've done when we've known better. My whole life, every bad thing that I did, I knew better. So it wasn't like, oh, it just happened. I didn't just accidentally make all these bad decisions and these wrong decisions. But can we forgive ourselves? Because we got to. Otherwise, we'll never be able to move on. Never. And then we find ourselves in this endless cycle of condemnation and guilt. And and what you end up doing is repeating the things that you don't want to do. So anyways, I'm on my bed. I'm crying out to God. And I am just begging for his forgiveness. And I'm like, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed and ashamed that I claim to be a Christian while doing all the different things that I've done. So I cried myself to sleep, obviously. <laughs> And uh, that was on a Wednesday night. 
Sunday morning, I went to church. And the church that we went to, well, my parents went to, and I was just, you know, home uh, for two months, quote unquote. (laughs) Uh, We went to church that morning, and the pastor stood up, and it was before he started his sermon, and he says, you know, I was in my prayer closet this morning, and he's like, Julie, he says, you came to my mind. And I was, I wasn't expecting him to call my name, you know, what? Okay. And he's like, he said, as I was praying for you, he says, it's, it's like I could see you laying on your bed and crying out to God and you were crying. And now, now I'm getting freaked out. I'm like, that's, wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. But you know what? God and the spirit of God is amazing. So he says, you were crying out and, and, and you were lying on your bed And, you know, God just wanted me to tell you that he is not ashamed of you. I was like, well, obviously, instantly tears. I mean, how can you stay hard to that? And uh, so he says, and he gave me this this scripture. It's in Joel chapter 2. And so he took me to this scripture. And in this scripture, it talks about how God is saying, I will never be ashamed of my people. Never. Wow, that's huge. That is so huge. God will never be ashamed of you. He will never be ashamed of you. Now, we're on this side of the covenant. We're on this side of the cross. We're in a new covenant with God. And in that covenant, Jesus has paid every price that we'll ever have to pay. So when we believe on Jesus, then God will never be ashamed of you. That was huge to me. I was like, whoa, does that mean I stopped going to the bar? No. Does that mean that I stopped drinking and smoking weed? No, it didn't. As personal and as real as that experience was, my identity was set in partying and being party girl. So I continue on. So my two months return to Montana turned into three years. (laughs) And, you know, there was nothing. I mean, I wanted to return to Louisiana, but I knew that wasn't the answer. I was hearing these things at my brother's Bible study that I could not deny the amazingness of what I was hearing and how much I wanted to believe it. But but how do we appropriate these amazing things that we hear when our our patterns and our life choices and how we live and who we know ourselves to be is so different than than the truths of the word and what we hear about God and how he sees us and how we should see ourselves. I mean there there was a gulf in between the two of those things. And so I, my heart and my head was all, you know, agreeing with what I was hearing, but I couldn't appropriate it to my body. I couldn't make my actions change because I was done trying, remember? So anyways, after the supernatural experience with my pastor, my brother invited me to a rodeo Bible camp. He wanted to take me along because he was an instructor and a leader at this Bible camp. And he asked me if I wanted to come along. And I was like, well, I'm not going to, you know, quit smoking because I'm going to a Bible camp, you know. I was very, (laughs) I didn't have the greatest personality. So anyways, he was like, well, that's okay. Just don't do it in front of everybody, you know, just find a quiet spot. I was like, okay, all right. If you want me to go, I guess I'll go, but I'm not going to change who I am because I am rebel girl, you know, like should have a cape or something. I don't even know. So we went to this rodeo Bible camp. At this rodeo Bible camp, it was it was amazing. And that's what most Bible camps are about. They're about getting you away from the TV, getting you away from everyday life, and then and just putting you in a place where you really ain't got nothing else to do than to see God. And so that's why these camps are so important for kids, for adults, for everybody, because it, it gets you out of touch with the world And it gets you in touch with the presence of God. So I went to this camp and it was revolutionary what it did for my relationship with God, just because I had a whole lot of time with just me and God and my cigarettes, obviously. So I get back from this rodeo Bible camp and I'm like, you know what, God, I just really want to hear your voice. I want to know what you want in my life. You know, God has a perfect plan for every single person. Jeremiah chapter one talks about how before he formed you in the belly, he knew you. God has a plan for every single person that is born. But you know what? You don't walk into it. It's not automatic. 
And I can tell you this, I know each decision that I made that walked away from the plan that God had for me. Now, can it get you back on that road? Absolutely. I mean, I'm evidence of it right now on the radio. He's He is leading me back to his original purpose for my life. But I made so many wrong decisions, so many bad decisions because, you know, I'm con- in control of my life. Well, you know what? I made a big fat mess of it. And a lot of times we want to blame God. Well, God must know, it, you know, there must be some greater purpose. In, in how your life is turning out. No, <laughs> I'm sorry to say that is not the truth. So anyways, I get back from this rodeo Bible camp and I'm just like, God, I really want to hear your voice. I was talking to him while I was in the shower. Did you know you can talk to God anywhere? That's the beauty of it. He's God. He's everywhere. He's with you always when you believe on Jesus. He's in you. He's around you. He's on you. So I'm talking to God in the shower. I get out of the shower and I'm telling God about how I just really want to hear your voice. I want to hear from you. I go to my room. I open up my Bible. I just open up the Bible, and it opens right up to Psalms 116. And I want to read that for you. Now, you might be thinking, oh, my goodness. Now she's going to start reading the Bible to us. Well, yeah, I am. But I want to warn you, I wouldn't change the channel if I were you, because this is going to minister to you. It can't help but minister to you. And that's the beauty of the Bible. If you open your heart and you understand that God is for you and not against you, and you start understanding and believing these truths, the Bible is honestly a love letter to you. And that's what I experienced that day after Bible camp. As I came out of the shower, I sat down on my bed, I opened my Bible, and it opened to Psalm 116. And here's the first line that I read. It said, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Wow. God hears your voice. He hears your voice and your supplications. What's a supplication? Well, okay, yeah, granted, I'm a King James Version type of girl. So supplications isn't a word that we commonly use in today's lingo. Supplications is like a cry. It's it's a it's like you're crying out to somebody. That's a supplication. It isn't just like a, a, hey, can you help me? No, a supplication is like, please, God. And you know what? That's exactly where I was. It says, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my supplication. God hears your voice and your supplications. I want to just ask you right now, what supplications, what are you crying out to God about? Because, you know, it's probably not something that you're going to talk about around the water cooler at work. You know, like, hey, what are you crying out to God about? You know, like, (laughs) what are you struggling with in your life? Because, you know, it just... It's down and dirty and awful. You know, I I really don't know what to do about it. That's not a conversation that we have in our workplace. It's a lot of, I never had that conversation even with a family member, even though we were very close. We are close family, but it's not something like, hey, you know, the weather is kind of rainy today. And by the way, this is my cry and my supplication to God, you know. (laughs) So I'm just asking you, I know you're crying out to God about something. And I would like to hear about that. I know it's personal, but you know what? Here's the beauty of it. You don't know me. I don't know you. But I would love to walk you through whatever you're crying out to God about. Because here's the deal. God hears your voice and your supplication. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're looking for, whatever you're crying out to God about, he is hearing you. And praise God, I would love to help walk you through this. So make sure and go to my Facebook page at Arrested and Free. And leave me a message or go to my ministry website, which is Julie's Ministry, J-U-L-I-E-S-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y dot org, O-R-G. And leave me a message. I would love that. So getting back to the first time that I heard God's voice. You know, a lot of times we think in this world, in order for me to hear God's voice, it has to be some big, booming, you know, scary thing that you see on TV. And that's not how it works. If it does, generally, you know, honestly, if you look through the Bible and the examples of where there was an actual booming voice from God, it generally wasn't a really good circumstance. So honestly, (laughs) I would rather hear God's voice. And there's a couple of ways that you can hear God's voice. The main way you hear God's voice is through the word of God. I'm telling you, he will speak to you. And that's what he did for me that day. He said, I'm hear your voice. I hear your supplications. I hear you. And it was like, you guys, there's nothing like it. I'm telling you that there's no drug on earth like it. There's no alcohol like it. There's no relationship like it. When you have a clue that the God that created this world, that created you, he knows you better than you know yourself. 
the same God that has done all these awesome things that forever was and forever will be, when you realize he has heard your voice and he is speaking to you, there's nothing like it. You'll never, I'm telling you, I, the deeper I get into the word and the more I hear the voice of God, it's what I was searching for all those years I was doing drugs and alcohol. It's drugs and alcohol is just a counterfeit for the feeling, the tangible feeling of hearing God's voice. I'm telling you, it's nothing like it. I can't explain it. You're going to have to experience it for yourself. And God wants you to experience that. That's the point. God is not just sitting up there like with his arms crossed, like, oh, until you, oh, well, maybe I should say in a deep, booming voice, until you behave, I will not speak to you. No, that's not what's happening. God is not sitting up there withholding his love and his care for you. God loves you. I, I'm trying to establish this in your life and in your mind. The only one hindering God's love is you because he never shuts it off. He never turns his back on you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. But guess what? You can. You can turn off that feeling of love. That's what I did my whole life, you guys. I'm just telling you. It's amazing when you hear God's voice for the first time. And I did through Psalms 116. Let me read a little bit more to you because it was pretty amazing. Verse 2 says, Because he has inclined his ear unto me, therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. Wow. I was like, God, really? You know, it was such a rush to think God hears my voice and my supplications. And now I'm like, because he inclines his ear to me. You know what incline means? It's almost like bending over and like, you know, when you cup your hand behind your ear, you're inclining your ear. That's how God is with us. Guys, man, that's good news. That is such good news. He inclines his ear to you. He's not ignoring you. A lot of our prayers aren't even prayers. Uh, they're just more complaining. And <laughs> But God even inclines his ear to you at that point. God is uh, for you. He is for you. He is not against you. I, I just can't even make that any more clear. He inclines his ear towards you. And then, and then it goes on to say, because he inclines his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. And at that moment, folks, at that moment, I made a decision in my heart. Yeah, I'm going to call on him as long as I live. Because why? Because he hears my voice and he hears my supplication. And he's actually leaning down out of heaven, tucking his hand behind his ear. Now, granted, I know, don't judge me. I'm not trying to bring God to a personal level, but I want you to actually picture this. I want you to picture God up in heaven, leaning down towards you. Not, not the holy religious guy that goes to church every Sunday and is there every Wednesday and he, you know, he's an elder in the church and yada, yada, yada. No, to you. He's bending down out of heaven and he's putting his hand behind his ear and he's cupping his ear and he is inclining his ear to you. Wow. I just, can you picture it? Because I want you to. He inclines his ear towards you. And you know what? If you call on him for the rest of your life, he will always incline his ear towards you. Praise Jesus. The next verse said, the sorrows of death compassed me and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. And I'm like, whoa, this is my life. <laughs> that's, that's when you hear things from God. It's like the words were just jumping out at me on the, from the page. I was like, oh my God, that's me. Like death compassed me. Like hell. I literally felt like I was living in hell. And it says I found trouble and sorrow. Yeah, that pretty much summed up the last 20 some years of my life was trouble and sorrow. I'm like, whoa. And then it says, then I called upon the name of the Lord. And I said, oh Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Wow. That was, that's exactly what I was doing. You guys, I'm telling you the word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two edged sword. It is alive. It doesn't matter if you're one day if you're one day after receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or if you're 50 years into receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Word of God is alive. It is going to talk to you. It's going to minister to you. It's going to meet you exactly where you're at, and that's God. So it says, I love, it says, I called upon the Lord. Oh, Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. And then it says, gracious and merciful is our God. Man, God is gracious. God is merciful. And he'll deliver your soul. He'll deliver you from wherever you're at right now. 
from whatever addiction, whatever bad. I'm telling you, God is good. It talks about in James how every good gift and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. God is for you and not against you. So as I laid on the bed that night after this rodeo Bible camp, it was really where I made that decision that, yeah, I'm going to call on God for the rest of my life. I really am. Why? Because he hears my voice. Man, that's a pretty awesome guarantee, right? He always hears your voice and he always will hear your voice. So I just want to encourage you. If you've never cried out to God, you should try it. (laughs) You know why? Because he's leaning down out of heaven and he's cupping his hand behind his ear and he wants to hear what you have to say. And you know what else he wants to do? He wants to wrap wrap his arms around you with an unmatchable love. It's not a love that comes and goes. It's not a love that he just feels and maybe he won't feel tomorrow because that's what I experienced in life. That's what we mostly experience in life. That's the kind of love that we can give. Like, yeah, I love you, but mm, you mess up. Mm -mm." But that's not God. God is love. That's who he is. He can't do anything but love you. So I just want to encourage you, if you're, if you're feeling that call today I, from God, if he's, in, he's inclining his ear towards you, and guess what? He's already made a way for you to spend all eternity with him. That's what he wants. You know, today is June 30th, and next week, we're all going to be celebrating Independence Day. And I just want to encourage you, you know, it could be more than just an independence for our great nation, which praise God for the nation that we live in. But I'm telling you right now, you can be independent from every sickness, every disease, every addiction, every, every shadow of guilt and condemnation you can be independent from. Praise God. If you just call on the name of Jesus, if you just say, God, I believe that Jesus is your son, and I believe that on the third day you raised him from the dead, you're saved. You're independent. You're free from everything the enemy can throw at you. If you've done that, I would like you to let me know. You know what? It says that it doesn't matter. Like it says in the word that if if a shepherd, he has all of his sheep, but he's lost one sheep. It says he'll go out and he'll forsake all the sheep just to find that one. And then it also says that when that one person comes into the kingdom of God, when you believe on Jesus, did you know that all of heaven rejoices? They literally rejoice when you say, yes, Jesus is Lord of my life. So if you've done that, I would love it if you would let me know. You can let me know by going to my Facebook page, Arrested and Free. That's Arrested, A-N-D-F-R-E-E. Leave me a message there or go to my ministry website, and that's juliesministry.org. That's J-U-L-I-E-S-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y dot O-R-G. I really, really, really would love to hear from you is all I'm saying. I just really want to hear from you. So please send me a message and then and I'll message you back. And your secrets are safe with me. I'm telling you, I've I've been there. I've done that. Nothing. Nothing makes me shriek, really. (laughs) So I just want to thank you for tuning in every Saturday morning at six o'clock in the KRDO News Radio at 105.5 FM, 1240 a.m and 92.5 FM. I want you to be arrested and free. I'm Julianne Harris. I know, I know You are the reason why The preceding was a paid program on KRDO News Radio. KRDO News Radio does not confirm nor deny the validity or accuracy of the information contained in this program. And the views expressed do not necessarily represent the views or opinions of the staff and management of KRDO News Radio. I know, I know.